Oh. So chapter 14 introduced this idea of generic programming. Unfortunately, without chapter 15, where we have inductive types, we don't see much application of generic programming yet. It talks about like recursion over natural numbers is introduced in an ad hoc way. We just introduce a natural number type and then the recursion, but we can actually, if we model natural number as one type of inductive types, then we will have like the problem of recursion um, value of an inductive type in general. Then, Then the book start to talk up use a pretty, I think, real example. It's a function f of type rho to rho prime, where it changes the type rho to the value of rho prime. So far, so far it's not that bad. But like f might be a doubling function of natural number. And then it gets weird because we wish to extend F to transform from type of, of this to this. So we can apply F to various spots in the input where the value of type row occurs and obtain a value of type row prime. So this is a like a map, map function, but it is not, like map over a specific type, it is generic. Like it can map over everything basically, like for example, the product type, we can see a product type like this, we can map, uh, um, so I think, it, I think it is actually map, like at least from yeah. the point of view of the way Haskell thinks about it as a functor. Um, it's just he's, uh, he has a weird way of talking about it, but that's okay. Yeah, it is a map. I think he even used map later. Yeah, yeah. But he still, I mean, he says it's, I mean, it's still ad hoc in this case, right? Because the map is for each each uh, type. Um, it's, it is not ad hoc anymore. He defined the map for the like whole ASD. You can map everything basically in this language. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess so. <clears throat> And um, yeah. And then it talks about type operators. Which is an abstractor binding of a type variable T within a type tau. This is uh, I guess this is a similar to generic or template in other languages. And it talks about two types of type operators. One is polynomial, another is positive. So polynomial top operator is uh, first you talk about type of uh, type operator is an abstractor t dot tau such that if t is a type then tau is a type. So it's exactly like generic or template in other languages where we have a type parameter t basically. Yeah, for example, something like this. Yeah, we have a type parameter t and then 
this type, we can use T in this type. And, and an instance of the type operator is obtained by substituting at type row for the variable t. And so an instance of that type operator is actually a type. And the polynomials are just type operators constructed with void units and product and some type. just like this. So nothing too fancy here. And then we have the generic extension. So generic extension of a polynomial type operator is form of expression with the following syntax. So then, then basically he's talking about an example. I don't know why he puts this in twice, probably just a typo. Uh, he's talking about this map example, which come back into the map. He described that here. This is this pretty hard to read syntax. But basically, the idea is that x, x is row and if x is if x is row, then we have E prime is row prime. And the expression E itself is tau when we substitute each row with two, substitute each row to the type T. Yeah, it's he it talked about it in the early chapter, so it's fine. And then we basically do is map this expression from this type into this type. Where row every row become row prime, basically. And, and then we have a dynamic. What is this T again? Is this like just I understand this, but then this kind of weird syntax just makes me kind of going back and forth. Uh, T is a type of E, I think. Yeah, T is a type of E. Well, the T dot unit is the uh, sort of the generic type, right? Yeah. The, but it, the, I mean, the T is never e, the T yeah. is never used. So it's... Yeah, like... T, T, yeah, T is never used. The, yeah, this is the generic type. This is the type of the E, I should say. 
It's like right. if you just had a constant function like f of x equals five. Yeah. Yeah, it's we it's saying we what if we map over the unit, which we just not, nothing will happen. Yeah, and I guess there's really only one function, which is the identity function, because you can't yeah. uh, because it has to go back to unit. Yeah, union must go back to a unit, so that's why the result is e. And what if we map over the product pipe? We map over its left and right. For void, void is a weird case, but for the sum type, we basically doing some pattern matching. And yeah, if we map over T, this is the actual case we do substitution. And here is an example we are given you given, given this, which is a sum type where the right hand side is a, pro, a product type two and n. And I guess n is a natural number. And then the result choose the, the same and n become n plus one. Because yeah, because we said we want to map over this, which is like put every natural number to become natural number plus one. Yeah, it seems like he should have where it has x dot e. That should be actually be the x dot s x. In there. No, he, he said it here. Let x dot e be the abstract to x yeah. dot s x. And also here it says that tau is actually this. Ah, okay, right. Yeah. And also type safety proof. And then here is the positive type operators. So positive uh, type of type of operators has a restriction that T cannot occur in the parameter how one or like more formally t dot tau one arrow tau two is a positive type operator. If one t is, does not occur in tau one, two t dot tau two is a positive type operator. So I guess the other, other part are all the same for this rule, but, but here, this one is a bit special because we say like tau one is a type. Notice we don't have t dot tau one is a positive type operator because t cannot occur in the tau one. And this map is about the same. Yes, just like we just map over the body.
I don't understand this paragraph because um, I have trouble understanding this. I do want to understand why they have this restriction, but I have trouble. Yeah, so I can I can give some examples yeah. after we're done here to explain positivity. Yeah, sure. We are pretty pretty much down here for the chapter fourteen. So yeah, if you want to take over. Okay. Let's see. Do you want to share your screen? Yep. Um, let's see, share screen. Okay. Uh, okay, so um, I guess like, so the thing that we were just talking about was, uh, like this is like how you would do it in, in Haskell or another similar language, right? Like uh, the, uh, sorry, like his, what was it? T dot tau, something like that um, would be, uh, like this would be the T and then this this part is the, the tau, right? Which is uh, a sum. Yeah. Um, and let's do, uh, actually, this is a little bit confusing here. I'm, I, uh, sorry, I wrote this a long time ago for something else, right? And then this is sort of the roles here, map F of whatever, right? So this is basically the following whatever the, that map role you know, specifically for this type, right? Um, and it just does the obvious thing where um, any place that there, well, usually people use A instead of T, but uh, so uh, anywhere there where there's an A, you just call F of A, right? Um, okay, so let's make up a new type. Um, we'll just call it type T of A. <clears throat> and let's say T has uh, a function, right? It has uh, uh, some V goes to A. Um, okay, so how do we write map for that? T of A, uh, RT, where map, uh, sorry, map T of some F, oh, sorry, F, and then we'll call this function G, right? Um, and so right now, so G is this, B to A and F is uh, A to B, right? Uh, we'll call this C instead. Um, and G is some C to A, right? And so what we need is uh, we need uh, whatever this thing is has to be a tau of B, right? It started as a tau of A or a T of A and now it has to be a, to be a T of B, right? And the way you do that is just by uh, function composition, right? So uh, uh, we'll do it like this, x of uh, g, or f applied to g of x, right? Right, so we had from c to a, and now and we wanna go from a to b, right? So that's just function composition. Um, so does that make sense uh, now? if this function was the other way around, like from A to C, it's like, what would, so this is A to C, like how can you make a T of uh, B, right? Uh, there's no way, there's no uh, expression that would give you that type, right? Given like this takes an A and this takes an A, but there's no way to get an A, right? Um, so oh. there's, there's no way to take make a B, right? Um, so, but the interesting thing is like, uh, see if I can get this right. Like if you, if it takes, like this is, um, uh, this is an A to C goes to C. All right, so what would that be? How would I get that? Um, so I can take G and apply it to, oh, sorry, actually, so what do we need? 
Um, we need to have uh, a, a B. We need to make that into, we had an A goes to C goes to C. So I make, need to make it into a B goes to C goes to C, right? Some expression has this type. Um, okay, so how can we do that? We can get a C by applying G and then G takes an A and we can apply F to A. So now, so this, this thing takes an A, applies F to it to get a B. And so this whole thing here has type, uh, what is it has type? A goes to B, right? I'm doing a lot of parentheses here. So that's a little bit confusing. Um, and then when we apply G to this A to B, we actually get the B goes to C, goes to C. Does that make sense to anybody? <laughs> uh, I put away too many uh, uh, type uh, declarations in there. Um, I think I lost everybody. Yeah, I got lost at the later okay, part. So I, you just have to go through uh, okay, let's go through, like, let's do it this other way, right? Let's say um, we have this function, which we'll call h. Um, okay, so let's say h has type, a goes to b. Um, So that makes sense, right? Is that right? Oh, actually, sorry, oh, I got it wrong. Uh, okay, so there has there's a way to make this work. Okay, so this function actually has to be B goes to C, right? Sorry. Okay, let's do that here. How do we get a function from B to C? Sorry, I don't know. Maybe I'm doing this wrong. Sorry, I, I thought I figured this out before. Okay, right. it's, it's always hard it's to do stuff on on a uh, on the fly. <laughs> yeah, on the fly. So this can't possibly be right. Uh, okay, so yeah, I'm just totally screwing this up. How do we get an A to C? Oh, right. Yeah, okay, now this is right. Uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Okay, sorry, I, my brain isn't working right now. I'm sure you, uh, anybody have any suggestions? How do we get a C? Only we get a C is apply, applying G, right? Yeah, but okay. G is from A to C, not from B to C. Yeah. So, yeah, so maybe I actually got the positivity backwards. Okay, I'm gonna give up because I don't, I can't remember how this works. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. Uh, I thought I wrote some examples, but I guess the the point is is that uh, isn't it backwards? Like the a the air variable is a right? Yeah. Does and it's saying to... it can't be in the domain type. That's what we're trying to see that it can't be in the domain. Yeah, type. but I think it's supposed to be like every time you like like this whatever's in here is negated so it's actually okay it's like supposed to be flipped here but um he actually has i don't know if he has an example in his coat his uh text ah sorry 
so it's I, I don't think he doesn't give an explicit example he just tries to explain it yeah well we could try to do the other way okay okay so we need some h that goes from c to a and so we got this we have this g here so we can apply no it's not working i don't know what that what i'm doing wrong okay sorry i can't do it on the fly i'm too dumb today Okay, I'll give up. But I mean, I, I... 